Free run episode 10. Where do we go after the last episode? Though I guess we still have to deal with uh, Aura, the guillotine. Oh, is this a flashback? Flam flashback? Alright, so this came down from Flam too. Did Flam discover demons? I feel like there's so much more backstory we're not getting yet. Interesting. And a bit odd. There's something brewing with this. They're acknowledging that there's some dishonor there or something unpleasant. At this point, it seems like the show's made a pretty definitive statement about demons, I guess. Like, they're bad. The demons themselves are saying they're bad. Seems like they just have an imperative to kill humans. I can't help but suspect on some level, deep down, that it's a bit of a bait and switch. Like, it could be the case... <laughs> I'm just digging this hole deeper and deeper. But could be. But there's more to the story. I wonder if demons killed Flam also. So far the show's been good about like, they give you a reason for a character's thinking and actions, but then you find out there's actually like more layers to that. There are more reasons. Episode 10, A Powerful Mage. And back to the present. Are you dead yet? Her just badass. Just like her master. Yeah. Hustle up. How do you know? Are you sure? フリーレン様が勝ちますね。あの人は魔族と正面から戦うような真似は絶対にしません。必ずアウラを欺いて殺します。Aura does specifically seem like a really powerful dominant strategy that's way too specific. バカな。いつだってやつ。Yeah, but then there's symbols influence.我らを正面から。Though it does seem like that's what she's doing now. Oh, they figured out some mana trick. Mana fast regeneration? Speaking of dishonor. What is it that they're doing? Okay, how does this connect the flam? Oh, was this their meeting? She really was a prodigy then. That was an interesting visual representation there. Flam having like a very thin mana veal. I mean, yeah, speaking of like layered motivations, the flashback we saw of the demon girl coming in and destroying the village, nothing compared to this. The fact that Freerun even went with Himmel's plan says a lot. And there's nothing you can do about it. I wonder what it's setting up for with the whole standing your ground, not running away thing. Whoa, already. The first meeting, also the first team up. Yeah, we've seen that in action. They really do love their magic. Cool design. This is also a deception. Whoa, that was quick. No deception needed. You want to be my apprentice yet? That's a lesson for you, Freerin. 
That's why she's that thin veil. And this is how she's going to beat Aura. Oh, is that all it is? I thought they were like draining the souls of the innocent or something like that. Concealment, I don't, I don't, I don't think that's, that seems like weird orthodoxy rule stuff. If I'm correctly identifying the analog in this to real life, no one has to know your ability but you. The demonstration of your capabilities is not your capabilities. Your power is your power. The over demonstration of one's power correlates, I think, with a, a lack of power or lack of faith in one's own power. What's more, I think people who are on the same level as you will know what you are intuitively, even if you're not flaunting what you have. Free written new. Meanwhile, the people that perhaps you most need to worry about, like people who are weaker, let's say, than you and resentful, will not understand that. And it's probably good to flush them out by giving them the impression that you're vulnerable. I think it's already begun. So that was their first or second day. It's making a lot more sense now. <sighs> I'm not fully understanding the whole mockery of magic thing. Now, or the gu guillotine <laughs> already dead. This is very nun like. You gotta learn how to sleep that way. So are you. What does Freerun do with Oro once she gains control of her body? Why don't you give that a try? See how that works out for you. There's still a little bit of danger here, like Aura also could be suppressing her mana, though demons have been shown to be very proud. It's a big Aura cloud. Right, also risky just because the raw power. Here it is again. But she's got the same uh, Aura cloud as uh, Flam did. I was wondering about that, like, I don't know if it's a translation thing, but she said, I want to eradicate all the demons, but I love magic. That but is kind of weird in that, that sentence. The show's like throwing at you that demons are terrible, right? But the common ground there is that, like I said, they're colleagues. They, they all love magic. They have the same love of this thing, this essence of something from the world, this art form. The demons seem like an infinite resource for developing magic and understanding it. Maybe somehow integral to it? I don't know. There's this classic idea here of like, love your enemy as if they were yourself. Think about your enemy as if they were yourself and you will understand them and then conquer them. You can maybe look at it in, in the other direction as well. I like see see your enemy in yourself. Just in like basic light pursuits too, you kind of have to love something to, to dominate it. It's too much manufactured willpower otherwise. There's this really cool danger there where you, you love something that deeply, you love your enemy that deeply, let's say. You love something difficult that deeply. It, it becomes you and you rise to conquer one challenge, but then that itself creates a new challenge. There's this weird spiral that forms. This is probably at least a little bit off topic, but just thinking about this kind of bond you form with something you're, you're obsessed with that you need to conquer and how it kind of enters you. I think it's safe to say I was a very late bloomer in terms of social skills. I'm still not at all a natural socially, which probably comes across to some degree. It's not my base state, but I think it was so frustrating to me because I'm naturally an extrovert and I love people and I derive my energy from social situations and you leave me alone for five seconds, I start crawling up the walls. This point of pain became a fixation and an obsession to the point where the pain of like not being able to deal with it was greater than the pain of facing it, which made me face it and like essentially dive in head first, putting myself in just extreme social situations. One thing I've been doing for quite a while now is I really enjoy going to bars and clubs by myself and then finding a way to make things happen for the night, make things fun, meet people. But I've been doing it for so long and it's become something of a cornerstone of my identity and my desire. And then one day you look around and you come to your senses and, and you see that it doesn't look like this uncharted territory anymore. It's like this tiny little unit of land that is so transparent that now you have like the challenge in the opposite direction where like you need to pull back and be a little bit isolated, be alone, not be addicted to it or consumed by it, or maybe finding a way to keep pushing it and find a way to keep growing in it. I know that's a random thing to throw in here, but that's kind of what I'm getting. This like weird connection between Freer and Flam and and like the demon world. They're, they're not that not that different or separate. There's a symbiosis. There's, there's a respect there. And there's like a, an opportunity there. Maybe you can control Aura and get her to tell her, tell you all her secrets. Well, we all know how that went. Is it just pride? Oh. Oh, 
I guess with the demons it would be power then. I was about to say, they're animals. It's just going to be raw physical strength, or in this case, magic strength, that determines their roles. Status and wealth though for humans feels like it's missing something important, but I want to hear more. It sort of begs the question. <laughs> Raw power. So exhibiting their power makes it essential for their respective roles. So it's not a total incapability. It's a tactical advantage, which means it could, could be exploited. Right, that's kind of what I was saying. Among other reasons. It's a lot thinner. I mean, I guess status and wealth is fine, though I'd probably add power. Maybe the fundamental thing underpinning that is the, the ability, wherewithal, to gather, synthesize resources, whether that be material or social. Like in the social domain, we put a very high premium on charisma. Charisma probably being a sign of how well somebody can recruit people and orient them towards a single cause, which in history was like the determiner of survival or not survival, as like any group of people will be any one one of the strongest people and also can be more productive towards like a growing society etc there is a parallel in the wealth and status thing i think for the weakest demons being the ones most incapable of thinking about or actually hiding their mana you see a lot of wealth signaling but i think a lot of times the people who wealth signal the hardest are people who are at the lowest level of wealth not the highest level of wealth like they've just entered and so in their new world they're at the bottom and so they like have to push over time the image that they're higher than they really are. I say this having spent a lot of time recently with a billionaire for work and like, yeah, a lot of his stuff is really expensive, but I've noticed it's not so much about the brand. It's not so much about the signaling. It's about the quality. And those things are often correlated, though not always. Being at the highest levels of wealth means you want to use your wealth to make your life as good as possible, but you don't need to prove anything. Maybe that's also why we have a sort of vigilance when watching people with wealth and status and we don't like it when we feel like the wealth and status were not earned like it's just just the signal. For example, we can root for the rags to riches story, but like harder to get behind the, the kid born with a silver spoon. Though I personally have no issue with that either. I mean, also a dark side of that vigilance is a strategy for increasing one's status and wealth, but that's a different story. Oh, whoops. It said, I just went back and watched it again. It says the stronger can't hide their mana. Well, I sound by the idea that the weaker will be easier and more important to draw out by feigning weakness. That's very thin. Almost gone. How many years has it been? We're back to like episode one, flash forwards. This is parallel with her and Fern too. Hey, she saw it. She foresaw it. More flowers. Oh. This coming back around. This is maybe the first instance of free and learning like this people supporting love backed magic. Oh, that also is very, very. Well, even after that, she didn't. She never names, name drops. She really took that to heart, or maybe just how she is. And she just kept practicing. And like, this is the beginning of solitude. Real solitude. Like, deep in the woods. Oh, it's my neighbor Totoro. Or Appa. Did the village go around her? That's the flashback of flashbacks. Wrong. That's what they're See, but they're strong, so they'll know. Yeah, 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 right, that's what I'm saying. That's a sign of someone strong. Sounds familiar. On the scales, we just wait. <laughs> we just, like, watch this happen and hope for the best. Can't just, like, Zoltark her through the heart right now. It would be brutal if, like, Aura also figured that out. Hope that Flam was right. 
Seems like she was right. <laughs> I was like, we all know how that went down. Now I'm like sweating, waiting for the scales. Uh, I should have given you pause, but yeah, the pride got in the way. Or had an opportunity here. Pretty cool. Turn it on. Turn on your mana. I'm just gonna activate it. Uh, I guess you can activate your mana in the scale after it's in the scale. Or to think it too far ahead. Sort of final moments on Earth. The scales never lie. By our own spell. That's dirty. Dishonorable. Well, I practiced that for a hundred years. She like lives and breathes and sleeps in a state of suppression. For this moment and many others. Flam foresaw. Thanks, Flam. I want to see the full. Yeah, I was waiting for that. There it is. They set that up so well this episode. Wow, it's consuming aura. Very poetic. Watch this guy like snap. I wouldn't put it in the same category of deception though. Ah, wait, wait, share your magic first. She's strong, she can resist a little bit. What a brutal way to make it happen, too. Couldn't have happened to a nicer demon. He <laughs> just walks away, doesn't even look back. Again, great job with that. You know, I'm like, yeah, we know that the scales are going to come in Fearin's favor as soon as we hear about the mana canceling technique. But you don't know for sure. You're not 100% sure because Flem's plan, it's like very reliant on them not learning and growing, which, I mean, she laid out a very good reason why they can't. But like, they they could, you know? It's not impossible. That would have been such a crazy twist. I wouldn't put lies, lies with words, or just outright deception in the same category as like hiding yourself. It's kind of like how, you know, you don't need to walk up to everyone and tell them all your secrets. Those are yours. Not sharing is not the same thing as lying. Of course, there are lies by omission, but if it's your business and other people want to use your public information to destroy you, and they're unable to destroy you because you haven't been forthcoming about things, that's not your fault. That's not on you. What might be more desirable than that is, I'm a big believer in the truth, and I think it's really cool when you have enough going on for yourself that you can literally say anything and be fine and people just have to kind of adapt to it or not but that speaks to the ability not that you like have to tell everyone everything all the time this episode was a very cool look back at flam finally getting to see her personality and as always speaking of lineage sort of the connections between flan to free and to fern you can see the the patterns you can feel the flam in fern even which is kind of cool and then there's that really cool thing of you know the strong knowing the strong the weak the arrogant the proud having no idea what true strength really means